Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Floating Point Exception. Uh, today will hopefully be a pretty short video. I'm going to talk about a common problem with uh, that seems to show up with a lot of the Cune Track PC Junior floppy drives, uh, and how to fix it, and other some and some other cautions that I've seen from, based on people trying to fix these themselves sometimes. So the problem I've got here is this particular drive that I got uh, recently has a problem has the dreaded uh, shorted tantalums. So uh, it's a common problem on these for some of the capacitors on the 12 volt side of the drive to short, and in this case I actually have one. So uh, what I'd recommend is uh, you check for this if you get any unknown drives um, to, to check this before you go and plug it in. Uh, I unfortunately did not, it didn't hurt anything, but the computer definitely did not power on uh, because it shorted out the 12 volt rail. But anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go into that a little bit, and uh, hopefully that'll fix this one, but we'll see what problem crops up next on this drive. So here we've got the uh, the floppy drive on the bench here, and what we're going to look at is uh, this, this short that's going on, which is, in this case, due to the tantalums, I'm sure. Um, but like I said, this is something I'd recommend if you get any drive that you just don't know the status on, is to just check this, because... Uh, it's a pretty common problem, is my understanding. Uh, of the drives I have, this is the first one I've run into with this problem. So for me, I've been pretty lucky, but, uh, but I did finally get one recently that uh, does have this short. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the... There's a Molex connector on here for your power for your drive. Uh, we're going to just check for a short. Um, and specifically, there's four pins on here. The far left is the 12 volt, and then there's two grounds, and then the 5 volt. So to check for this, uh, just get out your multimeter. Um, you can use the diode checker mode and use the, the beeping, or if you don't have that, just check resistance is fine. And what we're going to do here is uh, probe these pins, and the first two pins, which is the 12 volt and the ground, you can hear here, that those are shorted on this drive. So that is the problem. Uh, if you check the middle two pins, those are both ground. Those are supposed to be shorted, and your 5 and your ground uh, should not be. So if you had a short there, that would indicate a similar problem, but on the other side, although my understanding is that's far less common. Um, and the reason for this is apparently more recently they've decided that the, the voltage for the tantalum capacitors needs to be increased. Um, they recommend doing two or uh, two, even two and a half times the voltage uh, of the, for the bypass capacitor of what the voltage is going to see, and in this case there are 16 volt tantalums on a 12 volt, which is not high enough. So, um, so the recommendation here is, and I got this, uh, Dr. Octor recommended that I just use some uh, 25 volt 10 microfarad uh, multi-layer ceramic capacitors, so those are pretty readily available and pretty easy to get. Um, so like I said, those are 25 volt 10 micro. The original ones are 4.7 micro, but uh, my understanding is he's had good luck with uh, using these in, as a replacement. As far as locations go, the three tantalums that are on the 12 volt are um, C23, C25, and C32. C23 is this guy right here. Uh, C25, or sorry, C32 is this one right here, which I've marked on the back here. Hopefully you can see this. And C25 um, is this guy right here. And you can check that just by... Um, you can just probe the capacitor directly and see the short. You'll see, even if it's not the, the capacitor that's actually shorted, it'll show a short because, of course, it's bridging the 12 volt to ground. So you're seeing the short through any of them. So um, that is one way to help find them. So uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, replace these capacitors and see how things look. Um, the other thing I'll mention is, because I see this a lot with um, a lot of people selling these drives and such, you'll see them on eBay. Please, if you have the ability to, um, please use the disc protector if you still have it when you ship these things to protect the heads. Um, the head carriage is right here, and by putting that in there, uh, it helps keep the heads in place and so that during shipping they don't get bounced around and damaged or misaligned, um, which is a pain to deal with. And the other thing I will say is, because uh, I see it, it seems to be a common thing, and people try to think they want to clean the heads for everything. And so they try to go underneath there and clean the heads with a Q-tip. Uh, I'd recommend be very careful when you do that. If you damage the heads under there, the whole drive is basically gone at that point. Um, you, there's really no way that I know of to fix that. Um, so what I'd recommend is use, a, um, use an actual floppy disk cleaner. I don't know where to get one nowadays. I still happen to have one, but um, you just use that with some... Um, 
uh, isopropyl alcohol and you can clean the heads that way. But that would be the recommended way of doing that. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and fix this and uh, hopefully come back and it'll be working. Okay. Well, good news is the power problem is fixed. Ooh, no, that does not work. The uh, drive attempted to turn and then couldn't turn. So, unfortunately. Oh yeah, even with the uh, even with the disc not in there, it's just not turning the drive. Trying to. Uh, this might be a bearing problem on this one. Yeah, it looks like a bearing problem. All right, so let's try to let's see if I can oil up some of those bearings. All right. So now we've got the uh, bearings oiled up a little bit and the head's cleaned, so now the drive's actually turning, although I had to admit I did not check the RPM on it yet. Um, but we're going to go ahead and try the internal disk test at least uh, on the Junior. Again, that's Control-Alt-Insert to get to this menu. Um, and uh, just to see if it, uh, on a disk that I don't care about, just to see if it does anything. Let's go through this little fun bit. If I remember the code to get through this, <laughs> I want to say it's MPNP. Yep. Well, it certainly seems to be trying. Whether or not it's turning at the right speed is a whole other question. Okay. Probably checking the other side now. It seems to do... Well, I'm not sure. I haven't looked in the code, but I'm assuming it's testing one side at a time. Let's see if it comes back with success. Okay, C is actually an error code, although I don't remember what that one is offhand. So chances are something's still not quite right with this thing. But uh, we're going to go ahead and try to boot off of something. I just sent them this guy have laying here just to see if it'll read it. Uh, this is just a booter game that I have. Definitely making a little bit of odd noises. Yeah, so no, it's not reading correctly. So... Unfortunately, this disc is going to take a little more investigation to find out what's going on. I had to guess it looks like the bearing may still be either seized up or it's not running the right drive speed, looking at the bottom. Um, while I'm kind of pressing space here and forcing the drive to move, it's, uh, it's moving a little irregularly, so I'm going to say that that's probably the next problem. Yeah, so, so now the disc has been, uh, the bearings have been lubed up a little bit and uh, cleaned up everything as best I could right now. Um, the bearing is still a little stickier than I like than some of my other drives, which you can flick and they'll free spin for a few seconds afterwards. This one still likes to stop pretty quick, but not as bad as it was. Um, so we're going to go back into the test again here and try this again on a disc I don't care about. And see how it works out. So, yeah, with the disk under load, I can see that it's not quite maintaining drive speed for when I calibrated it a little while ago under low load, but it's not bad. Hmm. The, uh, the lines on the disk are on the uh, spindle on the bottom are only migrating slowly, so it's not too bad. So maybe not where I want it to end, but, um, but we'll try it. Well, it's getting a little further in the tests this time. The uh, jumping around to different tracks now, rather than just going sequentially down. Okay, now I got an error code B, so that's a little different. Uh, again, I'm not sure what that one is, but um, 
<clears throat> I do want to try booting off of something here, so let's go ahead and try this again. And it is actually booting. This is a booter disk. <laughs> So it does actually seem to be uh, reading enough to at least start. So uh, then my video capture, they're kind of blanking out there, but yeah. Okay, so it does actually work at least to some degree. Um, that error code B, I'm not sure off the top of my head what that is. Uh, and of course, this particular booter disk, I have a feeling is probably only single-sided. So it probably is only exercising one half of the disk drive, but but I will call that at least a partial success. I'll still need some more testing on this drive to see um, what the problem is, and I also want to try to loosen up the uh, bearing a little bit more than it already is. Um, it's, it's still a little sticky that, for my tastes, uh, for what I'd like to see it behaving as, but, but we shall continue testing. One last thing I was going to point out is where these uh, capacitors are on the circuit diagram from the QMTRAC manual is um, uh, the C23 is this uh, capacitor from the 12 volt line down to this digital ground. Um, 25 is this one right here. So that's from this um, the, the down to, from an, to analog ground. So that's pretty much right near the same spot. And 32 on the circuit is uh, shown up here uh, on this, the 12 volt feeding into this uh, MC3470P. Um, and that's the only one that's a tantalum. on. The C6 one, is a, that's a ceramic cap, so that one's, um, that one's fine. You don't need to touch that one. But those are the three that are on the 12 volt line. Alright, so as you can see, um, I did do a little bit more testing with the drive kind of off camera um, just to see uh, under normal operation if I could see what the problem is. And I was able to uh, copy a whole set of files from a almost full floppy disk onto my hard drive. So it's at least able to read both sides of a disk. Uh, maybe, it, maybe it's a problem with writing on both sides. I'm not sure yet. I was also able to fully format a disk uh, and it seemed to think everything was okay. Although I did notice when it was um, formatting the disk that instead of just seeking down all the tracks, it would occasionally go back to track one again, which I'm not sure. I don't think that's normal, um, but maybe I'm just not remembering correctly. But, um, but as far as I can tell, operationally it seems to be working. Uh, like I said, I still want to dig into it a little bit more of what that, um, what that one error could have been. And also I plan to uh, disconnect the drive here and get some more uh, oil on it and try to loosen it up a little more than it currently is. But, uh, but I'm going to call that a success. It does seem to be working pretty well, so I'm uh, happy with that. And uh, I hope this helps some of you guys out who uh, may have heard of the tantalum issues with these drives. Um, you don't have to replace all the tantalums from what I've seen. The 5-volt rated one, or sorry, the ones that are on the 5-volt lines are all rated for like 16 volts, so that they should be fine. Uh, obviously, if you'd find one that's shorted, um, that's obviously an issue. But um, in my case, I did take the three off and did test them, and it's just one of them was shorted, which of course, you know, chances are once one of them goes, it's not gonna, the rest aren't gonna be really used much since the system won't really power on that way. But um, in any event, like I said, hope this helps some of you guys out and uh, like, feel free to like and subscribe and post comments in the comment section if you have any other suggestions or questions about this. Thanks everybody. Bye. Alright, so I had a little more time to do some diagnosing on this drive to figure out what the error was and I did run the adva advanced diagnostics with the uh, diagnostic jumper on the back of the system, which is part of the um, hardware maintenance manual that's included with that. And it ran into a code 1298, which is basically drive speed adjustment. So what I am seeing appears to be what's going on. And when I put a disc under load, um, this drive is just slowing down. And so what I did is I actually took um, the spindle here and everything apart. And this thing was still kind of gummed up. And now I've got it. I don't know if you can see or not, but it spins very freely now. I actually completely took this apart and took out the spindle on the top and... Uh, lightly oiled it in there to get it. So now it spins really easily. And I also moved the motor to give it a little more tension on the belt and it's still having issues 
with the speed adjustment. So I'm going to have to do some more diagnostics on this and see if I can figure out why it's slowing down, uh, if it's a possibility that something's wrong with the circuit itself, or if it's just there's still just too much friction possibly in this uh, the top, like the top spindle here or something. I'm not sure. But so I'll keep, uh, keep working on it, and I will uh, post something if I find anything new. Thanks for watching.